As we begin this chapter, here are some things to keep in mind about culverts. Culvert diameters must be big enough to handle the largest expected flows of both water and materials, such as sediments and branches. Often, it's better to consider two smaller culverts rather than one large one. Fire possibility might affect the choice of metal versus plastic culverts. Metal culverts are fire resistant and more likely to survive a fire. Culverts need to be sloped to ensure drainage and to prevent them from becoming clogged by the building up of sediment and debris. Here's another chore. Culverts need to be examined and cleared regularly, especially prior to the rainy season. We used a small tractor and backhoe to dig a trench for the culvert, sloping it toward the downstream end. We lined the bottom of the culvert trench with gravel and small rock and smoothed it out with hand tools. Then, using a backhoe and hand tools, we created an entrance pool on the upstream side of the road. We lined the edges of the entrance pool with nearby rock, digging each rock into the sides of the pool to stabilize it. Next, we filled each pool with small rock, right up to the lower lip of the culvert. Here's a closer look at the nearly finished drop pool. We added T-posts to mark the pour-over lip where water enters, so we could monitor for any damage that might occur during heavy rain. When water suddenly drops in elevation, head cuts can begin that create erosion that moves upstream. We want to be sure we stay on top of that possibility. The pool provides a place for water to slow down and deposit sediment. As the pool fills, the water eventually reaches the bottom lip of the culvert and has a more gradual flow. As water flows into the culvert, it does so in a less destructive manner. The sediment that is left behind in the pool becomes the material that will eventually move downstream. This gradually raises the stream base toward its original height and also provides a nutrient-rich soil for vegetation to take root, further stabilizes the system, and guides water deeper into the ground. The keyed in rocks on the side of the pool that receive runoff directly from the ranch road form a minor pour-over lip that protects against erosion from that direction. This is the finished entrance viewed from upstream, awaiting the first seasonal rain that will stimulate plant growth. This is a picture of the finished pool. It is viewed from the road and is looking upstream. Here are several views of the system three months later after significant fall rains. And finally, three years and three months afterward. Next, we'll see how we treated the culvert outlet. Remember, because we are moving down a slope, We'll need to consider the velocity and power of the water as it spills out of the culvert. Here's Neil to explain. When we have an incision, a head cut, something that is cutting down into the stream, it creates what's called vertical instability. Then we'll use a drop structure. That structure would be something like a Zuni bowl, which is basically a, a rock-lined plunge pool where the water is able to pour over something armored, hit water or sediment, and have its energy dissipated and then continue flowing on, or something like a log drop, which is a series of log mats that are like a staircase in the, in the stream bed. And that allows the water again to move over an armored structure as it's descending a significant vertical drop, uh, a place that it can then dissipate its energy at the end and move again slowly with a consistent gradient that's relative to the overall gradient of the, the hillside or the stream channel slope. Once again, using the backhoe and hand tools, we created an exit pool, also known as a scour pool on the downhill side of the culvert. We lined the edges with nearby rock, dating or keying each rock into the sides of the pool to stabilize it. Next, we filled the pool with small rocks. This time, we put a large flat rock directly under the culvert lip. This rock placement is designed to catch the falling water and dissipate the energy, thus slowing the water. As the water loses energy from friction on the rock, it lowers its ability to erode the stream and it lowers its ability to carry sediment. That concludes Chapter 1. We talked about considerations when choosing and using a culvert, culvert entrance pools, and exit or scour pools, sediment trapping and its usefulness, and energy dissipation to prevent erosion. In Chapter 2, we'll talk about a grade control structure called a one-rock dam. We placed a one-rock dam about 10 to 12 feet below the culvert outlet pipe. Please see the references posted below this video. Chapter 2 will autoplay or you can bail out now and watch it or any of the other chapters on your own schedule.